Hello, how are you? Welcome to Hey Han. I'm your host, Hannah Fletcher, and today I have the wonderful pleasure of speaking with Nathaniel Siegel. Let's do this. Hello, Nathaniel. Welcome to Hey Han. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. It is such a pleasure to be speaking with you. Would you mind introducing yourself to the audience and letting them know what you do? Absolutely. So my name is Nathaniel Siegel and I am a full-time professional magician. So that means this is my day job. I actually get to make money doing this, of uh, performing for people all over the world through Zoom, as well as in person in the Los Angeles area and beyond. And it's fantastically fun. So you mentioned that you are on Zoom doing these shows, which I just found this out prior to us actually having this conversation. Could you tell me a little bit about what that process was adapting your whole show to Zoom? Or I know nothing can compare to any type of in-person experience, obviously, but can you explain a little bit of the process or if you have like a funny story, just share about the whole Zoom experience. Sure. Well, so a little over a year and a half ago, this whole thing did not exist. This was uh, by necessity, when in March of 2020, just like many other magicians and other performers, freelancers, had everything taken away from them. And they had to figure out a way to uh, reinvent themselves because I, all of my shows were canceled. And uh, so I very quickly pivoted to Zoom shows and invested in lighting and sound and, and everything. Uh, I even bought the, the domain virtualmagicclass.com in March of 2020. So uh, that's uh, worked out pretty well for me. But um, I, I am able to teach magic and perform through Zoom. And I've really worked hard on creating magic that is both impressive but also interactive. So it's not about just watching a screen like you're watching Netflix, but everyone is participating in the magic, helping in certain ways, contributing to the choices that are made throughout the show. And it's really a lot of fun. So that's, uh, that's kind of the, what, uh, what I've invested in in doing virtual shows. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been able to perform for people all over the world and uh, sometimes have to wake up very early because I'm performing for uh, different time zones, people in China or India. And uh, it's, it's just been a great way to get people brought together. I mean, it, uh, being able to provide that service for people when we didn't really have much entertainment. And I've, I've noticed now that companies are staying online. Some companies are entirely uh, change to being virtual. So uh, it works out pretty well. I can perform anywhere. I'm glad to see that you were able to be so adjusting with this huge shift. And I'm really glad to see that it didn't close your door. It actually just kind of opened another one, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, so and proud of you. Said, I'm, yeah. I'm beaming. I really am. I'm just so proud of you. I really want to ask you in terms of being a magician, um, what would you say is some kind of common misconception that people probably have about magicians? Absolutely. Well, I think, I think first of all, uh, uh, for, I think most people, they don't realize this is actually a job, right? It's that, oh, you can actually be a magician as a job. You, you don't, you know, I, I actually got a degree from UC Berkeley in applied mathematics and theater. And so I had that background and, and all ready to, to get a real job a real quote unquote job. And then I decided to try my hand at doing magic as a full time uh, career. And, and I think the common misconception is that it's one, very difficult. Uh, I, it, you re it really takes a lot of hard work and passion. And, and I think the thing is, uh, you really have to make sure that I'm constantly working. So whether that's performing, but also making connections and making sure I'm booked. Because I think the thing is, uh, whether or not you're a good magician, You've got to you've got to live, and you've got to do shows, and so that's really what it takes as a as a full time performer. I'm spending a lot of time in office, at, behind my computer, doing emails, marketing, uh, outreach, just uh, social media, all of that, I, and I do all of it myself. I don't have an agent or anyone. Uh, I'm going out and getting 100 percent of the shows myself, and it is not easy to. Uh, day after day, be able to go in and do do those shows, but uh, I think it's very rewarding in the end. So I think uh, my 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 impression is that people assume that m being a magician means oh you you don't have a real job, so you're not working hard. And I think it's actually the the reverse, where it's it's a very difficult job because it's not like a 
uh, a salary job where you can kind of just, you know, say that you'll get money no matter what because it's every every dollar I make is because I've worked hard to uh, to get the shows that I have. So it's uh, it's it's hard work but very rewarding and I do love it. A great answer. And also I have to say. I completely understand where you're coming from. It really is a full-time job. You're you're serving as the the marketer. You're serving as the the product, and then it's also up to you to be able to become adjusted to all of the new tricks, all of the new trends. Also, I have a question for you, and I've always wondered this, and it kind of popped into my head as we were just having this conversation. How do you practice? I know you you live alone, <laughs> just like I do. How do you? I do. Practice? Um, do you have, can you practice alone? Do you have to have somebody else around you? Is it a, an unbiased party? Like, how do you practice like that? Great, great question. Yeah, you know, it, I think it varies uh, uh, on a number of factors, whether that's through Zoom or um, uh, for, for just regular close-up, because I do close-up roaming magic. That's actually a majority of what I do is magic that happens in for small cocktail hours or weddings uh, or stuff on stage. and. I, I, I take a lot of time from the inception of the routine because I actually create a lot of my own magic uh, and I will go off and, and try to practice it and create those beats and moments, the scripting, everything to get it the way I want it to go. But I try not to spend an insane amount of time on these routines where I try to perfect every moment. When I get it to be good enough, and I don't like to think that I'm just okay with good enough, but I think what's really important is the magic that I do is for people. It's made for people to watch, whether it's online or in person, it's for people. And the end of the, at the end of the day, I can work really hard on a routine that I love, but if the audience is not connecting with it, if they're not reacting the way I want them to react at the moments I want them to, that's your judge. That's your, that's your audience. And so they're, they're the ultimate uh, um, judge of what what ends up in my show. And so I try not to spend too long on the kind of practicing alone aspect. And I do, I can, I, I would basically, uh, I have a couple of friends I can try things on, uh, but uh, if there's a routine that doesn't necessarily involve interacting with someone, then I try to do as much as I can on my own. But I really try to just go out and perform in low stakes environments. So whether that is at a, a party with friends or maybe going out to a bar, I will go and do close up magic. That's a great opportunity or sometimes open mics. I try to take any opportunity I can to perform because uh, at the end of the day, it's more exposure for me. It's, a, a, it's This is an industry term called flight time. It's the amount of time I get to actually go out and perform and I think that's one thing I'm very grateful for is in 2019, I actually did 250 paid shows, which gave me a lot of flight time. And so I actually got to change things in real time with the, the performances. Well, do you oh, mind actually showing us a trick? Would that be okay? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Let me, uh, I'll show you something. This is with one of my favorite things, this money. That's right. As as I've talked about being a full time magician, uh, being a full time magician, I sometimes people don't think you make a lot of money, but uh, this is actually the real secret to being a magician and making money. See, it happens like that. You see, that's when that changes. That's one hundred. That's two hundred. That's three hundred. That's oh. four hundred. That's five. Hundred dollars, of course. There we go. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk. But that's also why I do it over Zoom because people will get uh, a little grabby. But uh, you see, unfortunately, I can't really keep it like this. This is slightly illegal. So uh, I, I try to I try to be low key about it. But you can see that is uh, one hundred dollar bills and well, come on. That was good while it lasted. There we, there, you, there we go. It's an expensive trick. I'm going to have you come yeah, and make sure. something appear out of my purse. <laughs> and I need you to convert it. I had a I, couple of ones in there yesterday. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Good job. Oh, oh my it. gosh. Well, thank you so much for coming on and speaking with me today. Feelings mutual. Thank you so much for inviting me on. And I'm so excited to see where this, this goes.
Thank you so much. Is there any information that you want to go ahead and plug for the audience to be able to stay in touch and follow you? Anything like that? Absolutely. Well, uh, I got my social media right up here. It's at Seagull Magic. Uh, you can go to SeagullMagic.com. Keep in touch with me uh, on there. Shoot me a DM or an email. And I'd love to come and perform for your event either in person or online. So I can't wait. There you go. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. That's our show, everybody. Thank you so much to Nathaniel for joining us today. What a wonderful conversation. And I personally learned a lot more about magic and magicians in general. So thank you for sharing all of your information with us. And thank you for showing us such a wonderful trick. My challenge to you guys for this week is to really honor yourself. And by that, I mean, I want you to honor yourself by not necessarily listening to what it is other people have to say or doing what other people want you to do. But make sure that you guys are finding a happy medium or a compromise between yourself and maybe what it is that somebody wants you to do. So for example, if your boss wants you to attend a lunch and maybe you're looking to quit the job, still attend the lunch anyway and hear the boss out. But just remember that in the back of your mind, you know that there are different things on the horizon and that there are different things in store for you that may not necessarily be in alignment with what it is you're doing right now. But go to the lunch and just bear that in mind. That way you can be present and be in the moment at that lunch. And that way you can still listen to what it is your boss has to say because they may be trying to open another opportunity or a door for you. So honor yourself and really just listen to what other people have to say, but know that you are not indebted to anybody that walks this earth. Thank you guys so much for joining in today. My name is Hannah Fletcher. This is Hey Han. Stay safe, God bless, and I will see you guys through the screen.